So in this video, I want to share with you the low budget testing strategy I've been running now for the past couple of weeks. So to kick the video off, we will be jumping into my ad account. I'll be showing you the results from the past seven days or so day to day. So you can see the kind of results it's been able to produce. And then we'll jump into the strategy itself. I'll go through it step by step, explain everything there is to know. Um, if you do want to get this strategy in a PDF format for free, you can do so. If you go into the video description, so just below this video, it will be the first link. Click that. It will take you to a landing page and then you can get your own copy for free before we jump into the video though just a very small request um, if you find this video helpful and it's the sort of thing that you think you're going to use let me know please do hit that like button please do make sure you subscribe as well if you enjoy my content and finally I read every single comment in every single video so if there's a question you want to ask me something you're not sure on or a video suggestion whatever it is simply comment it down below I will see it and I will respond to you as well and with that being said then guys thanks for tuning in and let's jump straight into it so on screen now is April the 3rd 2020 so almost two weeks ago now um, and just to kind of give you an introduction into how this strategy works or the couple of ad sets I want to show you then for example are these two here the top one is a retargeting ad the second one is a cold interest ad so it's going out to people who have never seen my product my brand or my Facebook ad before both of them are on a two pound per day budget which you can see here and the first kind of interesting piece of data I want to show you is this cold interest one has a relevance score of 10. Relevant scores are super important. If your ads aren't producing the kind of results you want them to, then the relevant score typically is the first thing you should be looking at because it's like a direct signal of how relevant your product or your ad is to your audience. And the higher the better, and the higher it is, the more it kind of translates into cheaper CPMs, cheaper clicks, etc. So the CPMs I've been able to produce are £2.11, £4.52 with an average of £2.91. Now these are website conversion campaigns and they are purchase ad sets too. As we get into the strategy, it will become clear how I'm able to get these CPMs so cheap. Cost per link clicks on average is five pence, which even for my kind of standards on average is actually really cheap as well. So I was quite surprised by that myself. And in terms of the actual amount of purchases, then I believe it was only one purchase for £19.99, which left me with a 4.83 ROAS. So nothing special, but not too bad. As you'll see as we go on, if we have a look at April 4th, for example, the results were much better. I was able to get three purchases with a one two pound ad set which was about 35 pounds per order 110 pounds total conversion value which with a ROAS of 53.91 which is obviously pretty crazy one of the huge advantages of running these micro budget strategies is that if you have a day like this for example because the profit margins are so high then it kind of pays for the next week or perhaps even two weeks of ad budgets as long as you keep running them at two pounds per day if we move on to April 5th so the Sunday typically weekends are like better for me I'm not sure what you guys get but typically it's like evening times during the week and then weekends however due to the current climate then everything's pretty random actually to be honest recently so on the Sunday April 5th I only got one purchase for the same product for the same amount which gave me a row so 10.25 or 5.21 on average because this retargeting ad at the beginning um, didn't get me any results for this particular day if we move on to April 6th um, I got absolutely nothing on this day um, and this is kind of like I was going to say it's a downfall to the strategy but it's not really when you're spending two pounds per day per ad set then you're going to have like really inconsistent results everybody knows that Facebook works on bigger budgets because the more data it has the more consistent it can be so that is kind of like one of the things to keep in mind is that if you don't get sales for a couple of days so if we take a look at April 7th um, I got nothing this day as well then don't worry about it because you are spending such small amounts um, then you will see these inconsistencies one thing to point out is the relevant score for this particular particular ad set has been pretty high and consistent all the way through which is obviously a really good thing and then if I just put this to lifetime have a look at the results over the course since I started running these ad sets um, I've had 23 purchases, £2.70 per purchase on average, which is crazy, crazy cheap even for me. However, during these current times, if you get the right products and these kind of results are achievable, both the relevant scores for both of these ad sets are pretty high, which is obviously a really good sign, which leaves me with a 14.32 um, ROAS on average. I can refresh this page as well so you can see indeed that these results are real um, and are achievable for you too. You just have to have the right product and put it in front of the right audience. Now that being said then how does the actual strategy itself work? So to start it off the objective being a testing strategy is to identify the best performing audiences 
and then scale the winning ones. When it comes to running Facebook ads, you should be doing one of two things. Number one is testing or number two is scaling and your budget changes depending on what your objective is. So if you're on a low budget, for example, the best thing to do is use a really small budget to test to find which audiences are uh, performing the best and then kind of split your budget up and spend the majority of it on scaling because the more budget you put to an ad set, then the more data can go through it, the faster it can optimize, the more consistent and more profitable the results can be. Put ad set then, the only thing that's gonna change is the detailed targeting section. We're gonna target one interest and we're going to narrow this with engaged shoppers. By selecting engaged shoppers, what this does is it makes sure is that we target those people who are clicking the shop now button recently, within the past seven days basically. So it increases your chances of finding those people who buy things using Facebook ads. Next up, we're gonna use auto placements. Now, typically I've always stayed away from auto placements, to be honest, I've always stuck to kind of like um, desktop news feeds on Facebook, mobile news feeds on Instagram and Facebook. But because things have got so much more competitive over the years, so when I first started advertising four years ago now, there were three million advertisers on the platform. And I think it was reported this year or last year, there was over eight million people advertising. So there's twice the amount of people advertising and there isn't twice the amount of users. So essentially there's more people com competing for each space. So I started testing with auto placements about six months ago maybe probably halfway through 2019 um, and the results have been really good so far because those other spaces are less competitive essentially they're cheaper you get a further reach and essentially this lowers your cpm and that's why i've been able to achieve those low cpms which i showed you in terms of the conversion day window i'm always going to go for seven days with low budgets um, the longer the better with smaller budgets and currently seven days is the longest that Facebook gives us. So just make sure you click the more options and then make sure you've got seven days selected. To kind of summarize this strategy then and why it works, number one is two pound budgets allow for slow but cost effective testing. You can go three or four days without seeing a single purchase but because there's such small budgets, um, then it's not a big outlay, it's not a lot of money to lose. And what this also means as well, point two, is that one purchase equals your Facebook budget paid for the next three to 10 days. Obviously it depends on what your profit margins are. So for example, if you sell a product and each order gets you 20 pound profit for that particular ad set, spending two pounds per day, it pays for the next 10 days worth of advertising on Facebook before you're in a loss. So one purchase can mean a lot. Point number three, by using engaged shoppers, I've already mentioned this, is you ensure you're targeting people that are currently shopping, are still shopping, because by selecting that, essentially it includes everybody who has hit the shop now button on other people's Facebook ads in the past seven days. And then the last point, auto placements, by selecting this, you open up those cheaper places, those less competitive places to advertise, which in turn increases your reach for the same budget and makes your CPMs cheaper. Now, if you're thinking those places such as audience networks, etc., are cheaper because they're low quality and you don't get the conversions, you may be right, which is absolutely fine at this point because we haven't spent a lot of money and we're simply testing. This is where scaling and the next steps come in, which is so start with the best performers when you've ran these three ad sets for at least five days. I'm a really big believer, by the way, of I would much rather split my budget over the course of, say, a week versus one or two days. So once you've run these for at least five days, if not seven, um, start with the best performers, look through the breakdowns and then narrow and increase the budget slash duplicate by 10 days. So if you do like this micro budget strategy, what you could do is you could duplicate the ad set 10 times. So you're essentially you're spending $20 per day. You can see the individual results per ad set and then you can just kill the ones which aren't profitable and continue to scale and increase the ones that are. So when I say look through the breakdowns, essentially what we do, if we come onto here and use these two as an example, if we select this breakdown tab here on the right, we can go by delivery. And if we go by gender, it's gonna tell us where the purchases are coming from. So essentially across these two ad sets, it seems pretty kind of similar actually, three for female, two for male, one for uncategorized. But then that's interesting in fact, for the cold interest targeting, we've got 15 purchases for males, two for females. Um, so essentially that would be where you would narrow and then start to scale on the males. And then if we move to, let's go for placement. And once this loads up, then we can see where all the data has come from. So there's been six purchases in total for this retargeting ad and every single one, which is quite interesting, has come from the Facebook newsfeed on a mobile device. If we have a look at the cold interest targeting, we can see that one has come from Instagram stories, 
but the majority have come from the Facebook newsfeed on a mobile device as well. So even though none have come from other places, what would we do now is essentially narrow this ad set to mobile newsfeed only, mail only, let it run for a few more days and then increase the budgets and duplicate up to 10 times if we so choose to. And with that being said then guys, that pretty much covers absolutely everything I wanted to in this video. Hopefully you found it informative and quite interesting. If you do go out and test this, make sure you come back, let me know. I'd love to hear the kind of results you guys are able to achieve. Please do make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Please do make sure you subscribe for four to five videos every single week. And of course, any comments or questions that you want to ask me about, simply post them down below. Before I end the video then, I just want to introduce you to my e-commerce training program, which is called Ecom Academy. There's been a lot of people asking me if I have some sort of training program or mentorship program and they didn't realize I had this so for all those interested there will be a link in the video description make sure you head across you can see all the different kind of content and support and resources that you get all the different testimonials etc um, so if you are interested head below into the video description there'll be a link there for the Ecom Academy and that being said thanks very much for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one